What are some of your darkest theories? Story One worked at Walmart home office for a time. They have seasonal layoffs where they expunge hundreds of people at a time, trimming the fat, as it were, getting rid of people who have been there too long or trying to restructure how a department functions. It's pretty much the fact that they just don't want to give senior employees enough benefits. People with 10 years of experience are cut because they get paid too much because these new batches of interns and college kids can be paid half as much. Hell, they got rid of and outsourced their entire accounts, payable, billing, receivable, and so on to another company. What's that mean? Don't got to pay 2,000 plus people's benefits and wages anymore. Story two, there exists footage of an emergency broadcast created by the government to play on TV in the event of an alien or supernatural takeover that all the militaries of the world could not overcome. Instead of surrendering, submitting to the unknown forces, the broadcast states that if you are near a gun-high building, that it would be in your best interest by now to end your life as to not prolong any further inevitable suffering you will eventually endure. Hello there. I was a doctor with the Air Force quite a while ago, and I can absolutely confirm this to be true. The government has prepared videos for literally everything you can think of and about one million more things you couldn't. There are contingency plans for contingency plans, including a plan for zombies, as dumb as it sounds, and they take it all very seriously. The planning, but they run drills for all kinds or weird, horrible crap all the time. I was involved in planning for medical disasters, which is why I am aware of the zombie stuff, except in the plan, it doesn't say zombie. It says loosely, persons infected with aggression inducing illness. I could go on for years about all the weird crap that they did. Story three. So you know the whole, before you die, your life flashed before your eyes. What if the life we are experiencing is just our life flashing before our eyes? And when we get to the point we are about to die, we cycle our life again in like a never ending cycle, a really long groundhog day situation. And that's why we experience random deja vu moments. There was a QI episode on British TV that discussed the life flashing before your eyes. They said that this happens because the brain is quickly running through your memories to find a way of saving yourself. For example, if you're drowning, your brain runs through all your memories to try to remember everything you've ever heard about drowning and what to do in that situation so you can do it. I don't know if it's correct, but it's quite interesting. Story four, no one is in control. There is no grand conspiracy theory. A lot of things in life are random and a determined person can change the course of history. The main thing that I learned about conspiracy theory is that conspiracy theorists actually believe in a conspiracy because that is more comforting. The truth of the world is that it is chaotic. The truth is that it is not the Jewish banking conspiracy or the gray aliens or the 12 foot reptilians from another dimension that are in control. The truth is more frightening. Nobody is in control. The world is rudderless. Alan Moore, story five, being middle class, work hours, type of jobs, taxes, salaries, loans, debt, buying power, etc., is set up such that people are just slightly not content whilst doing the most work in moving society forwards. Plus all the things that are targeted towards middle-class people, such as credit, home buying, insurance for everything. This is a big one. Constant propaganda to convince people in the lower class, think blue collar workers, to move into the middle class. E.g., a college degree is a necessity to move up in life. Meanwhile, the power is with those who do nothing but live off the rest of us. Story six, the music and actor industry only makes stars and people with actual talent don't matter because they can't be as easily controlled by fat cats. Edit, didn't go into detail because I didn't think it would be this big. What I said still stays true. The music actor industry only makes stars and people with actual talent don't matter. What this means is that the music actor industry is so big 
and has enough money slash influence to turn people from nobodies to somebodies. If you're not a good singer, enroll in singing classes as part of a contract. Not a good actor, enroll in acting classes as part of a contract. Hollywood and music industries will focus on the physical appearance of people and then just supplement their deficiencies by financing their practice. For people who are really good, either naturally or through classes, at singing, but not attractive, those people won't be prioritized by record labels. Thus, my theory is that the music industry just makes stars instead of stars making the music industry. They can't be as easily controlled by fat cats. What this means is that someone who is good at singing from the gecko won't want singing classes and other things to make them better since they are already good and thus contractors can't wrangle them into some contract wherein they make music in return for payment of their singing lessons. Basically, the music industry has such a wide pool of people to pick from that you almost have to give in and be subservient in order to have a career. This could also tie into why there is a lot of scandal around actors and singers. Story 7, I don't know about Dark, but I think there was at least one advanced human civilization prior to the common belief of 5,000 years ago where real civilization started. There was a pretty massive change in global climate around 12,000 years ago that would have likely destroyed all or most human life on the planet. I just think it's odd that there are modern human remains found from like 300,000 years ago and that humankind just languished as hunter-gatherers for hundreds of thousands of years and then just exploded in intelligence and tool-making in a few thousand years. So I think there may have been at least one advanced civilization, not necessarily advanced like humans at present, but more advanced than stone tools and stuff that existed on Earth and was wiped out due to a comet or whatever. This is especially evident in a lot of the similarities in global religions and tools and agriculture and all that stuff. It lends credence to a hypothesis that some ancient civilization predated the known major ancient civilizations and they all came from the same tree. Story eight, there is a national security white paper somewhere detailing exactly how global warming will end human civilization and they all know it's real but they can't help themselves when it comes to bribes, building big factories, etc. They have a plan in place for a managed decline. All the Trumps, Bushes, and Clintons of the world will be taken care of so that they and their successors die out in peace and comfort while we struggle and fight to our final breath. Something similar was done in Britain during the Cold War. People were told to build shelters, stay in cellars, etc., even though the government knew this would be completely useless in most places, especially in London. Story 9. That this reality was created by us. I often wonder what would happen if we conquered death and achieved immortality. We would eventually, after thousands or millions of years, know everything about everything. Life would eventually become dull and boring. We would seek out a way to make living exciting. So we came up with a way to immerse ourselves in this simulation slash game. We are born. Our previous memories are erased while we participate in this simulation. And we make it absolutely impossible to prove that there is anything else but this reality. When we die, we exit the game and regain all our memories. And then we played another round. Story 10, my boss underutilized and underpaid me to do menial tasks when I'm capable of so much more because the menial tasks take a lot of time. He doesn't want to spend on them and he knows I won't leave this job yet because I haven't even been here for a year yet. I'm not doing anything at all I was told I'd be doing. I was at first and he actively keeps me off of projects and keeps me from advancing even though everyone else around me is astounded. I am not working on it with them because I am definitely capable and qualified to do so. Whether he does it on purpose or not, I don't know. But it's a terrible way to treat an employee. 
And for the last month or so, I've only thought about how much I just want to find a different, higher paying job that will actually let me put my skills to use. Story 11, that the universe has imploded and we're just not aware of it yet. If you think about it, what we humans know about the universe is only what is visible to us. And what is visible to us is within a handful of light years of Earth. There's theories about our placement in the universe, but no way to prove that we were in the fringes or dead center. So if the universe has started to be destroyed by a massive black hole, a string of supernovas, or something we can't even fathom, life may have already ceased to exist and it just hasn't gotten to us yet. To make matters worse, once it does become visible, there would be no Armageddon-like solution. We would just be completely and utterly screwed, waiting for our impending destruction. Story 12. If living in a simulation is possible, it's mathematically more probable that we are the ones in a simulation. If a society has the means to simulate an entire universe, at least to some degree, it would be entirely within the realm of reason to assume they could do it on multiple machines and have multiple simulated realities. So for every real reality, it's likely there are several simulated realities being run from within it. So speaking pure odds, we are more than likely in a simulation. So speaking pure odds, we are more than likely in a simulation. This doesn't follow. I have posted the refutation of this before in longer form, but the basic idea is this. One simulation is more likely than two, two more likely than three, etc. This is because a single one must be invented before others can be created. Each one is not equally likely. In fact, they are significantly less likely. It's like the concept of a limit or an asymptote. None of that really matters though because the basic premise of your model is flawed. Your model assumes that all of the simulations exist, and from an external point of view, one of the universes, be it the prime universe or a simulation universe, is chosen. This isn't what is happening. The prime universe must exist. The simulations may exist, but their chances of existing are extremely small. No matter how many of them exist, the chance remains small. Think of it in terms of dice. For the simulation universes to exist, a number of things must be true. Technology must exist to make it happen. Someone must do it. They must then do many of them, etc. None of those things are given. They are all, for lack of a better term, maybe. So for each of those first two things, you need to roll a six. But the final one, you need to roll two. Six, the chance of many simulations any number, even infinite simulations, is 5 in 216. Obviously, I am not saying those are the correct probabilities, but it does illustrate that the necessary assumptions to make the simulations possible are much more powerful than the number of simulations in terms of determining the probability that they exist. Story 13, that there are cures to many of the world's medical conditions that haven't been released because it's far more profitable to sell treatments for symptoms than to cure the underlying condition. Also, that most of the mental health problems diagnosed in the last hundred years or so are the result of complex chemicals used in industrial and agricultural processes that chemists definitely don't understand the long-term physiological effects of getting into our groundwater and food. Story 14. Some municipalities deliberately don't put their downtown traffic lights in sync. Merchants want drivers to stop for lights at every intersection, hoping it'll encourage people to become customers as they look in store windows, waiting for the lights to change. Or instead of random shop owners manipulating entire governments, it's just a matter of poor timing in a system that's designed to maximize the speed and safety of the flow of traffic. Think about it. Streets in main downtown areas are usually laid out in a grid and often with many one-way roads. So the most efficient way to optimize the flow of traffic is to make sure that all lights in any given direction of traffic 
are in alternating conditions at the same time, allowing vehicles to move through the grid while causing minimal gridlock. That's why it always feels like you're either always stuck at red lights or breezing through all greens, because you are. Besides, what would be the point of making someone stare at your storefront windows if they're traveling in a car? Soon as the light's green again, the driver is gone, and most drivers are paying attention mostly or solely to the light story 15. I love Bernie Sanders. The man is a true leader and has been literally for decades. He was on the front lines of the civil rights movement from the 1960s, 50 years ago, and he's never stopped fighting for the people all the way through, but I think he knows they're probably just going to just JFK him. This is why he's always making comments to the effect that this movement is not about me. It's about all of you fighting for your own rights against the corruption and greed of the government and Wall Street. He's preparing people for his inevitable assassination and telling them to pick up the torch if, when he drops it, in a perfect world, he'd get elected president and make sweeping changes that transform the lives of millions of Americans. But in our world, you can't just cost billionaires billions of dollars and expect to walk away like it's nothing. You can't just walk in and tie all their hands, preventing them from exploiting people and the planet and expect them to bend over and take it. They're going to fight back. And once it hits them directly in the pocketbook, it's going to get more stringent than bad mouthing him in the mainstream news. First, they're going to trash him in every possible way. If the polls show that hasn't worked, then they're simply going to rig all the voting machines. If that doesn't work, then some lone nutter with a gun will make sure the problem is solved. We can only hope that if, when that happens, the entire nation comes to a grinding halt and says enough is enough, we're not buying the crap anymore. It's sad that I even have to speculate about this, but this is the reality we live in. Story 16. Don't call me crazy, but I feel like there's some group trying to divide people sometimes, like Democrats and Republicans, Eagles and Steelers fans, blue collar and white collar workers, Chevy versus Ford debate. There is hardly anything to unite people as one. Have you ever looked at people at a sports game yelling and fighting with each other? Like why? You aren't playing. You don't know the players. This game will literally have zero effect on your life. So why do you care? Why is some guy in the green jersey an a-hole? People need to think more about the bigger picture, I think. Story 17, Democrat slash Republican, liberal slash conservative, the platforms and ideologies and political opinions, the patriotism and nationalism, the division between neighbors based on how they should be voting. There's no difference. It's a shame. It's ultra rich slash not rich. The conservative right exists to make poor people believe that they could one day be rich and that the government shouldn't interfere with regulation along the path to inevitable wealth. Minorities and outsiders should be shunned and ostracized and never receive our hard-earned resources. Reproduction and women's bodies must be strictly and ironically regulated to help build a healthy working class. We must hate those who would live in our society and reap its rewards without striving to make money, most of which will go to their employers. In fact, we must take up arms and train to fight these outsiders, either through the largest military in the world or with our God-given civilian firearms. The liberal left exists to make each person feel special and that their contributions to the greater good are actually doing any good whatsoever. We should give greater and greater amounts of our earned income to the government, which is composed almost entirely of the ultra-rich and their representatives, in order to help our neighbors. We should be ready to surrender our firearms, our only protection from a tyrannical government, because we're too foolish and dangerous to own them ourselves. If the government ever asks for our sole source of self-defense, we should be ready to surrender the guns willingly. 
and then pay ever increasing taxes to fund schools and infrastructure, which seem to be crumbling for some reason, despite all our tax money, both sides are out to screw you. They ask you, hey, would you rather be abused by someone wearing a red shirt or a blue shirt? And then they just take turns messing you because all along the only color that mattered was the green in their pockets. Story 18. The world we live in is actually hell. It is a mirror dimension of the actual world, and we are forced to relive our lives until the end of days, which culminates in the heat death of our universe. We are allowed a chance at redeeming ourselves to get into a dimension of paradise, an unending universe. However, we are doomed to make the same mistakes due to the fact that none of us remember our past lives. Every now and then, we uncover a moment in time which transpired in the exact way as our past life, and that is the true explanation for deja vu. Story 19. As a species, we evolved to be social animals, tribal in nature. As such, like any other territorial social animal, we're capable of banding together to do great things. However, my theory is that the bandwidth for tribes is limited and the internet is revealing that limit because we cannot process the workings of so many independent minds. We're setting the stage for our own self-balancing collapse. We're drawing tighter, harsher lines in the sand, giving our all to cut out the ones we deem unworthy. Eventually, we'll fracture, break down into workable chunks of nations, long for an empire, expand, collapse, repeat. My theory connects back to my worldview. Politics are just entertaining the tribal divide and giving us something to fight about. Social issues are dividing the tribes by arbitrary lines. Culture is tribal glue. It goes on like that, but ultimately it's all impermanent and not really worth spending energy on. Sucks if you got a crappy hand in life, but I'm too far removed from the game and too self-centered to care about helping. Everyone is trying to pull everyone else into their tribe these days in a zealot like fashion, but they're just paving the road to collapse with good intentions. If people really wanted a better world for everyone, they'd find a way to like people they disagree with. I'm content either way, though. Screwed or not, I get to have a good time watching from my fence. Story 20. The United States government is purposefully causing mass shootings for profit. Basic version, government finds a shooter who shoots up a public place. Renewed vigor for gun control laws from the left. Renewed vigor in denying them from the right. Huge NRA donations to the right to stop proposed gun control measures. Huge donations to left-wing senators from lobbyists who want more gun control. Increase in membership for the NRA, which means more revenue. Media makes money by spamming their version of what happened, likely getting paid for their message by lobbyists, depending on which side of the aisle they sit. Everybody is making money off this, except the American people who suffer. Kind of like the Tuskegee syphilis study, but with murdering Americans for money. Story 21. Destiny. You have a predetermined path ahead of you. Things don't always happen for a reason. Sit back and enjoy yourself above all else. When it's your time to go, it's your time to go. A seat belt, steel toe boots, Kevlar and vest. None of it matters if it's your time to leave. Live your life without regrets and be ready to leave at any moment. Dark, but helps keep life from getting you down. Story 22, that solipsism is real. There is only one mind, my mind, and the entirety of reality is just a figment of the imagination. Everything in reality is just fantasy. Now you may say, wait, I think too, but you only think because I just imagined that you would respond with that. In my carefully crafted fantasy, I have implemented strict rules, the laws of physics, which everything must abide by. Judging from the current situation in the world, I'm hoping the next iteration will be less messed up. Story 23. After reading a lot of these theories, I think I should explain the majority I've made over the course of a few years. There isn't just one heaven. When you think about religion, 
you know about different ones, Islam, Catholicism, Christianity, the Jewish religion, and Buddhism. These religions all seem to have their miracles, traditions, rituals, and rules. But in some event, these gods worked together to make what we have today. But they all wanted to be worshipped separately, so they revealed themselves one by one. And to reach their paradise, you must believe in that one God religion too. There is only one God, but is content with being worshipped in any way. This one is something I came up with recently. There was one God who made the universe. This God would show themselves to us, but would end up always getting misinterpreted. This God in turn realized what would continue to trend and just accepted what would happen. Being worshipped by us in any means... If you want me to continue with this, just ask.